Warning, this video contains poorly pronounced Faroese, 2020 leather jacket wearing Hilbert, folk metal, and a very good doggo. Stay tuned. The Faroe Islands aren't really the kind of place you'd expect to be finding many Frisians. They're in between Iceland, Norway, and the Shetland Isles. It's quite cold, it's quite windy, there's a lot of sheep here, in fact more sheep than people. But there is actually a great legend about the Frisians right here in this village on Stremoy in the village of Kirkibu. Not this one. As 2020 Hilbert explained, the Faroe Islands are situated in the North Atlantic Ocean, roughly equidistant between Iceland and Norway, with Scotland the closest other landmass to the south. The Faroe Islands were largely first inhabited by the Norse, who probably kicked the Irish off the isles. Although did you know that there was also another group involved potentially in the settlement of the Faroes, and these were the Frisians. So in today's video, let's find out a little bit more. Well, luckily the band Baldur's Draumar, who are themselves from Friesland and make music about Frisian history, particularly about the Middle Ages, have just released a new album called Njort. This new album, consisting of some 10 amazing new songs cover the Frisians who went to the Faroe Islands. And so in today's video, with kind permission of the band, we'll be going through some of the songs that talk about these stories of Frisians in the Faroe Islands, starting of course by looking at the first song and the title track, Njort. The Njord is, of course, the anglicized version of the Old Norse god of the sea, Njordr, who is shown here in this manuscript. Now, we don't know a great deal about the religion of the heathen Frisians before their own Christianization, but what we can infer is that they will have had a similar pantheon and beliefs to many of the gods being worshipped in Scandinavia. And, of course, if these are Frisians in the Faroe Islands, it's likely they also had encountered Norse paganism on the way. It's possible, too, that Njord is related to the more continental Germanic god of Nerthus or Nerta, who is also mentioned later on in the album. Now, this song, as well as the next song in the album, Dusch op See, which means uh, at home on the sea or at home at sea, both talk a lot about the seafaring abilities of the Frisians, for which they were particularly famous during the early and later Middle Ages. <laughs> The Frisians have been particularly remembered as very capable merchants and seafarers pursuing maritime trade, going down the Rhine, over the Channel across to Britain and Ireland, up into Scandinavia, as well as through to the Baltic and probably beyond, especially if they also reach the Faroe Islands. But as well as this mercantile focus, the Frisians were also quite famous for being pirates, possibly even joining in with Viking raids at various points, as well as being quite famous uh, pirates and robbers later on in the Middle Ages. And this is certainly how they've been remembered in the Faroe Islands in various songs, games, and folk tales, which in Faroese all refer to the Frisians, whether as Frisian poems or simply by the name of the Frisians or Frisians, a whole genre is built around it. And finally, also a kind of Frisian game that is played by Faroese children about Frisian pirates coming to take people away as slaves or hostages. In almost all these stories, what is shared is this idea that the Frisians are a pagan bunch that have come across the sea and are incredibly warlike. In fact, very much how the rest of Europe tends to portray the Vikings. In the Faroe Islands and a lesser extent in Iceland, that role is instead given to the Frisians, perhaps because as a newly Christianized group, they didn't really want to admit that their ancestors had been busy on Viking expeditions as pagans, and so Frisians made good stand-ins for that. 
a particular bunch of Frisians who may either have left the region around 1040 or possibly earlier when it was conquered by the Franks are said to have settled on the southern island of Suroy in a settlement called Akraberg where they had a kind of Frisian enclave and didn't mix with the other Faroese Christianized population but maintained very much their own traditions and crucially also their own pre-Christian pagan religion here. The legend goes that when the Frisians were defeated by the Franks, many of the Frisians didn't want to live under this new Christian kingdom. And so they decided to set out onto the ocean in their boats and like the Vikings would later on, they went around raiding and plundering before deciding to settle here in the Faroe Islands. Now the island they settled on is the most southerly of the Faroe Islands. It's called Suderoy, which is the South Island in the Old Norse that it's derived from. And so for a long time, there was a colony of Frisians living on the island side by side with the Christian Faroese that were there, obviously the descendants of Norwegians and those from Ireland and Shetland that had come before. Baldur Straumar on their new album also have a song about Akraber, here more in spelled in the Frisian way. Another of the songs called Yule also has a connection with a story about the Frisians. Now this word Yule is the Frisian for the English Yule, which is of course very similar, which is the name given to the mid-winter feast that was often celebrated in pre-Christian and indeed following Christian times as well. The story goes that around Christmas, villagers from the northern village of Ayi invited the Frisians up to spend a Christmas feast with them, but that during the drinking and the feasting, a fight broke out between the Frisians and between the inhabitants of the village, which resulted in one of the villagers being killed by the Frisians, just creating bad blood between them and the Northern Islanders, something that will come up later in the story. <laughs> As these are legends, some people date this story to happening around 1300, while others put this story a little bit later. In any case, the piratical nature of the Frisians would be very important as the Faroe Islands were torn apart by a civil war around this time, pitting the Northern Islanders against the Southern Islanders. And it appears that after having lost in battle, the Southern Islanders called on the Frisians with two of their Viking-like ships to come to their aid and fight against the Northerners. It's known that the Northerners were being led by a Bishop Erlunder around this time. However, other people claim that this happened after the Black Death hit the Faroe Islands, which was around 1350. So, of course, both things can't be true if they involve the same characters. But when does that ever get in the way of a good story? Now, the story goes that they lived happily until the plague came, sort of around the 13th century, and that all the Frisian families died of the plague apart from one. And this was the farmer of Akria Burgi. And this is the name of one of the farms that was there. He and his sons were left over. And those were the only Frisians left on the Faroe Islands. But they would be the most famous Frisians on these islands for what was about to happen next. The plague had been very hard for everyone on the Faroe Islands and soon there was a war between those from the south, so we presume those living on Suderoy, and the rest of the Faroe Islands between the Southerners and the Northerners. And during this war, the Northerners seemed to have won the first battle and defeated the Southerners. But following this point, the Southerners decided to choose the farmer from Akrabjerg, so the last of the Frisians living on Suderoy, as their leader because it was legend that he was very strong, as strong as a bull, while the Northerners chose as their leader the bishop from Kirkubo, who was also apparently an incredibly strong, fearsome man. Now the second battle that they fought between one another was won by the Southerners under the leadership of the Frisians. They also had help apparently from two of these Drakkar, so these Viking-like ships, although of course we're after the Viking Age at this point. And so the bishop from the north decided to flee here to Kirkubu and to hope that he would be safe here. But as the legend goes, he would not be safe here at all. 
These events are captured in perhaps my favorite song from the new album, which is called The Last Fries, which means The Last Frisian, which isn't too hard to make out in the English either. Zij stikken van zilver en draaien van goud Van een gods hoe het zo heeg Dat scrubben de dek van wolken Een tjerke van stier en van hout Vier dijling te slang, jocht de noord doet je een zut En de groen kleur red, van het bloed van het valt Maar de hoerier te vries was in So the church for which Kirkibu is actually named, or I think in Faroese it should be pronounced something like Chichibu or something like that, was actually a point of contention. Now it's obviously in ruins behind me today and it might have looked something in a similar way in the time of the story because it was under construction. Now the problem was that we are here in the more northern part of the Faroe Islands on Stremoy, but the southerners, so from Suderoy, also had to pay for the construction of this church, for which they weren't too happy because remember they were fighting the northerners at this time. So the southerners weren't too fond of the bishop who came here, who was leading the northerners when he decided to come here. And that's why when the victorious southerners showed up, they thought maybe it's time to get rid of the troublesome bishop. But of course, for the Christian southern Faroese of Suderoy, killing a bishop was not the done thing. And if you killed a bishop, that meant, you know, you were throwing away your chances to getting into heaven. However, for the pagan Frisian that was still living there, the farmer and his seven sons, that wasn't an issue because he didn't believe anyway. And so they asked the Frisian farmer of Akrebjerg to come here and to kill the bishop for them. Now, of course, the bishop knew when he saw the, this huge Frisian and his seven sons coming that this meant trouble. So he decided to climb up on one of these walls with a big axe. And so he hid on top of the wall with his axe while the Frisians were outside. Now, despite being heathens, they still thought, actually, this is a sacred place and it's a huge man with a big axe. We're not going to go up on the wall. And so the Frisians and the Southerners, they decided to sit outside the walls. They ate all the livestock that was here that was meant to feed the people working on the church. And they sat and they waited for the bishop while he was up that wall for three days and for three nights. But after succumbing to the hunger, the bishop fell on the third day. And when he fell, the Frisians were waiting for him and they hacked him to death at the bottom of these walls. And so ended the life of the bishop of Kirkibu. So this is, of course, a legend. We're not sure how much of this is true. Now, I think it's personally fairly likely that there was a kind of Frisian community here because there are several stories here on the Faroe Islands that have survived and also ones that have gone over back to Friesland and other areas telling about Frisians who came to live here on the Faroe Islands. Now, unfortunately, there are no Frisian words or cognates in the Faroese language that have been discovered yet. Of course, they might be hidden in there and there are a few place names that might connote that they were connected to Frisians in some way, shape or form. But it's not completely unthinkable that they would have come here. Of course, they were very maritime people. We know there were Frisians trading with Iceland even later in the Middle Ages and of course with Scandinavia and places around Britain and Ireland too. So it's not 100% unthinkable, although how much of the events here with a bishop climbing up a wall and waiting up there and you know some heathen Frisians conveniently being on the southern island to batter his head in, not entirely sure, but it's a fun story nonetheless. The legend goes that after the Black Death had ravaged the Frisian community on Akraberg, the farmer and his sons and any remaining Frisians left the settlement and instead moved to nearby Sumba. Now what's interesting is that while the Frisians as a community disappeared into the uh, Faroese population, the population of Sumba to this day actually do claim a partial descent from the Frisians. And so the end of the last Frias talks about how the last Frisians, well, they never really disappeared and they actually came up into the population of the Faroe Islands and even more so into their stories and their tales and indeed even into their games. And the last thing I'd like to end on is a kind of game that is played on the Faroe Islands often with children where one person pretends 
happens that they have been captured by a band of Frisian pirates and one team are the Frisian pirates who wish to get a ransom for this person and the other team play as the family of the one who uh, has been taken hostage and the idea behind it is there are certain uh, rules about what is said in the back and forth dialogue between the two groups and the rule is basically to pretend that no ransom will be paid either because they're too poor or because they don't care about the person that has been taken hostage and in this way, the Frisians are remembered in this piratical way on the Faroe Islands in this children's game, as well as in the aforementioned sagas and tales that have been recorded about various places where the Frisians were and where they interacted. Very interesting stuff, so let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video, and do check out Baldur Straumar's new album all about this topic, about the Frisians on the Faroe Islands. I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you guys have enjoyed the topic. Baldur's Drama's new album I'm really enjoying listening to as well, so I do recommend you give it a listen, as well as checking out some of the sources in the description below as there is more information about the Frisians on the Faroe Islands to be found there. Tune in again next Friday for my next video, possibly something about the Dutch in the American Civil War, or it could be a different video entirely. Check out some of the links in the description below to check out other videos that are on similar topics around the Frisians or the Vikings or more specifically about the Faroe Islands and let me know what kind of videos would you like to see in the future around these topics. I do try and get back to some of the comments so I hopefully will be seeing some of you down below. Anyway until then I have been Hilbert and this has been The History. On Yeah. Okay. Prima.